Shalom, 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 everyone. We want to welcome everyone to the house of the Lost Sheep of Israel. I'm Elder Michael Johnson, the pastor over here with the Lost Sheep of Israel and with King James Bible University. And as I said, I had an announcement that some people that are uh, just coming in and just letting them know again that um, the lost tape from Deacon Emmanuel, the lost tape number two, actually going to be premiering over at um, King James Bible University at 3 o'clock Pacific Time, 5 o'clock Central, <clears throat> and 6 o'clock Eastern Time. So hopefully you can join us over there with that one to where you can hear that in its entirety. And today we we have a pretty interesting thing that's that's going on. And last week we, we spoke about what God did and what God created. But I would need to make sure that each and every person really make sure you take these notes down because a lot of what's going on is to help you really understand what scripture is and we're going to find distinctly what certain things are, which we found out last week, which helps us out this week, which will help you out forever. And what that has right here is God created man, man created Frankenstein. Obedience of a seed. We're going to learn a lot here today. And what's required of the seed. With the seed that was given to each and every one of us. So as we move forward. I ask that each and every person right now. You you take off your carnal hats. You're going to have to put on your spiritual hats. Because we need to understand what is required of us. If we're looking to go into this kingdom, because we can't take nothing with us, that including the flesh and everything that surrounds it. So your pants, your pockets, your money, that cannot come. So what we want to do, we're going to look at the insights and everything and understand what was going on from last week 
the nature of Israel. In relationship with God, and as we're going to dive deeper into this text, and we're going to get in the purpose in our lives. So the same as I described last week. We, and many of us, will fall to the likes of Satan. But this just to remind us that the most perfect beings that was created, <clears throat> that God even stated, <clears throat> excuse me, can fall, can fall from grace and turn from God. So the ways that Satan serves us as a warning to us, with all pride, it would lead us to a rebellion and it can lead us to our downfall. So we'll remain humblest. <laughs> and that's a hard thing to do. But we need to keep the faithfulness towards God and help us to avoid making the same. So we need to understand Israel was created in the image of God. Israel was created in the image of God. This means that each and every one of us who's sitting there saying that they part of Israel, they the children of Israel. Each one mean each and every one of has an inherited worth of dignity which cannot be taken or any way be diminished. And truth is a reminder, regardless of the count, that it's currently showing that ignorance on some of our exact forefathers. Because the same thing is some of our forefathers and we don't know exactly what tribe we're from. This comes from being disobedient. But with that comes hopefulness. A message that God created for us for eternal life, for our existence in this in this earth is only temporary. <clears throat> and our lives have a higher... So the information today should discourage and should encourage many to seek after God eternal kingdom in our lives which is the ultimate destination so we need to understand this within our minds so this we got to see what this purpose is, to go on beyond this world what our highest purpose is God created us to be a certain way and we are prone each and every one of us, we're prone to sin. We're prone to rebellion. In our pursuit of our own desires or interests, we can offer the things other than God's will. So these passages that we're going to look at, we're going to look at man's limitations, which is consistent with needs of God's grace and forgiveness. The complexities of a human, the complexities of Israel. And our relationship that we should have with God which showed the inherent need why men have sinned and rebelled against God. So as last week we learned the importance of obedience of a seed which emphasizes the the things that produce and what design it should be doing because a seed if it to produce fruit vegetables, plants, flowers. That's what it should be producing. However, they they don't. This when you have these genetic mutations that people do, the element of a seed. So I want to invite you over to somewhere. We're gonna we're gonna start looking at this a little bit closer now. I'm gonna pick this up at Sirach chapter thirty three and we're gonna look at verse two. We want to take it here. And we, we want to get some recap and understand what we need to do. A wise man hateth not the law, but he that is a hypocrite therein is as a ship in a storm. This showing you the importance of recognizing and utilizing that God did some things and we want, we want to put some other things with this because we want to understand not being hypocritical even in our faith. Hypocritical in faith. I want to show you this. We're going, we're going to look at these two together. In, in Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. 
And actually, I'm going to take this down. We're going to take it down to 27. We're going to take it down to here. It says, therefore, whosoever hears these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built a house upon a rock. The rain de descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon the house and it fell not. For it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine, a foolish man. So if you don't do them, you're going to be like a foolish man. Which is built upon a house of sand. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon it in the house and it fell. And the great was the fall of it. A wise man hated not the law, for he that is a hypocrite therein is as the ship in a storm. We want to focus on these and understand them all together. And while we keep pulling in things, we're just building upon what we need to be doing. Because the same thing in Sirach chapter 38, verse 4, it says, The Lord created medicines out of the earth, and he that is wise will not arbor them. So is a man a hypocrite. <laughs> is we hypocrites. Writing for our spiritual growth. Are we hypocrites? Just as medicines can heal our physical bodies the ailments, anything that this body can encounter, God already had created medicines in the earth that will heal them. So the question becomes, are we hypocrites? Throughout this transformation, even the God's word and grace, we can become vessels of his love and wisdom impacting the world we see today as we see these things today. To understand this a little bit better and just seeing what we really need to see and when you're looking at um, Isaiah. It says, Fear thou not, Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. For I am with thee and be not dismayed for I am thy God. Sin becomes, and I want you to make sure you understand it, are we hypocrites? Are we hypocrites? I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, I will uphold thee with thy right hand in my righteousness. We really want to understand the main thing is about this with, with God, Yahweh, that he sent his word, Jehovah. This should remind us of the ways how he's going to strengthen us. And, and he has did these things, but are we being hypocrites? The main thing is we want to really find out what we are really about. So we need to do self checks to find out really about ourselves. We need to understand exactly what we need to be doing on all things. Verse 29, I want to show you this just to where we can get some 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 weird things together and they're weird to us because we don't do them. In Ecclesiastes chapter seven, verse twenty nine, it says, Lo, this only have I found, that God hath made man upright, perfect. I'm gonna ask this question again to each and every one of us. And I'm going to answer it. I'm going to answer it first. Did God, God, if you, do you believe in the word of God? Yes, I do. But do you believe in the word of God? Do you believe in the word of God? That's the question. So if you got I, you just put I. If you believe in the word of God, I, if you don't, nay. It's that simple. Because we have to really dig down and find out really what we are about. God messengers should not have to be working this hard to show you what God's word is. <laughs> he shouldn't have to do this. Year after year, 
month after month, day after day, hour after hour, minute after minute. Lo, this is only have I found that God made man upright. But they have sought out many inventions. <laughs> I'm telling you, we can't we can't get we can't get out of our own way. He has God has created medicines in the earth to take care of that body. Period. A wise man won't arbor them. So the the question becomes where I even got to question myself. Have I ever purchased cold medicines off the counters of, of, um, of a grocery store anywhere else? Have I ever purchased cold medicines? Have I ever purchased headache medicines? Have I ever purchased any of these things that man created? that don't align with God. Yes, I've, I've done that. So I'm guilty. I'm guilty as charged as he's saying. He said, he that is wise will not arbor them. So I chose man ways when I was doing that. So same thing. So the question becomes is, <laughs> nobody want to ask, do that make me a hypocrite? Oh yeah, that made me a hypocrite. Because I should have sought for colds and which I do now for colds and stuff like that. I do natural things. Yeah, they don't taste good, but and I had a sister I just did like like that this earlier this week. And she she let me know the taste wasn't good, but she did it. This is what we have to do. Without many inventions, which it shows that we have fallen from a state of humanity with God, which underscores the importance of us to where we should be aligning ourselves with the divine nature of God, understanding that God through his precepts, where we seek in wisdom of the word of God, we can change our own content and make us shining examples of his grace and wisdom. That's what it should be doing. That's what it should be doing. This is why we have the issue. <laughs> this is why the issue is here. Because what I need to do is challenge each and every one of us right now. Our thoughts and our minds. Two, and we're going to look at verse six and seven. To be able to better understand exactly where we're going, it says, For the Lord giveth wisdom. So the Spirit of God giveth wisdom. And out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. Did we pay attention? <laughs> Did we pay attention? These are simple questions that we should not be asking for everybody else. We should be asking ourselves. That's why I'm, I'm even answering it. He says, for the spirit of God giveth wisdom and out of his mouth, out of his mouth, is going to come through his prophets, come in knowledge and understanding. Did I listen? Didn't listen. I got, I got whoopings to back that up. I got butt whoopings to back each and every one of those up. I, I can get into someone with, I, you know, I'm going to throw my brother in it because me and him was partners in crime. <laughs> but I, we didn't listen. It says he lay up sound wisdom for, for the righteous. And we got sound butt whoopings. Sound butt whoopings. Because we didn't listen. Same as when me and my brother, I, I even hate to bring it up. Me and my brother are gonna go into we gonna go into the grocery store with our mother. We kids, we gonna plan what she what she gonna buy. We don't want the cereal she want to get. We had our own plan of cereal we gonna get. No, cut the monkey. We gonna act a fool. And that's what we did. She wanted to get one. We want the other one. She said no. We act the fool. Right there, that hand came. We stay in California. That hand came out of Texas. And butt whoopings was all over the grocery store. Then shut up! Shut up! And we got, you got to close our mouth, snot just blowing out our nose. 
Old man gonna walk by. Y'all need to just listen to your mama. See, they they, they see they let belt whooping go on publicly. Then we running out our nose, crying everything from a butt whooping, based on we gonna cut the monkey and make our mama buy what we want to buy. <laughs> that didn't work out too good. That didn't work out too good. When all we had to do would make sense. And all we had to understand, the precepts on which was given. That's all we had to do. Nothing more, nothing less. So it tells us right there. He gave us wisdom. And he gave it to us when we go in the store. Don't be asking for nothing. That was, that was a, simple, a simple analogy. But no, we already got our alternative. And we paid for it. In the store. Serves us that man. The same thing is. We got admonished for it. Greatly. Chasing. But he showed you that man that he created. In the image of God. But. Through deceit. Enemies. He, he can fail from his original glory. As an enemy. Same thing is what was going on with our flesh. And when you look at that once perfect and blameless, but allowed pride, greed, corrupt, and led us astray from God's will, which was a result where we was cast out. And many of us that still put our trust in the pursuit of rolling into the pits of sin that will continually lose their way. The true identity as children of God, we should have instead should we should embrace different things and not embrace the false promises of the world. These are things that we should have did, things that we should have done, but we didn't do those. In fact, um, we go over here to First Corinthians chapter one and I'll show you something in first verse twenty seven. Help me explain what I what I'm trying to do. It says, but God have chosen the foolish things out of the world and confound the wise. And God have chosen the weak things of the world and confound the <laughs> And we took our little weak mama and she told us some, some new butts up. That simple. That simple. It is written in this, in the scriptures. So the same is what we should be doing is when you see something as this, see with the faith, with the faith of a seed and a seed has an original state and seed has different things. What it's already supposed to do is already written inside the seed on what it's supposed to do. We should be able to do those things. In fact, um, when you look at Mark chapter four, verse 31, we're going to see what's happening here. And we're going to find out a few things here. We're going to see right here in verse 31. It's like, a grain of a mustard seed, which when it is sown in the earth, is sown in each and every one of us. Once this seed is in us, once it's in each and every one of us, it is less than all seeds that be in the earth. But when it is sown and groweth up, it become greater than all herbs and shouted out great branches so that fowls and air may lodge under the shadow of it. You see how beautiful this is. So if it's sown in the earth, which is us, and it's watered correctly, you can become one of the greater branches that we should never let things of this world deceive us by the enemy tools and making these good things bad and bad things good. Using this enticement and pleasures of this world where we get caught up into. So with this is a reminder of this mustard seed that we should have because when you're looking at the mustard seed as it said and we just we were just there we're looking at um uh, ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 29 we're just looking at it and the main thing is there, saying this right here it says lo that i found only only this only have i found that man was made up right that's the only thing he found that the only thing he found in us that we was made righteously. 
That's it. What he did, it was very good. That's all he found. It says, but however, what he found, what he made upright, and what he has did perfect, it sought out many inventions. Makes us a hypocrite. And all we had to do was do what was instructed in the seed. All we had to do was instructed in the seed. We sit there and think we can go elsewhere and do other things that other people can do, and we can't do that. Just because we got away from, or we was cut off from the branch, they think. We was cut off from the branch, they think. See, man's scheme against man is sin is done towards man. In fact, um, to show you to show you what I'm saying here, we're gonna see something in Genesis chapter 39. We're gonna look at this one real close in verse nine, making all the sense in the world and help you out a little bit better to get more. So, what's going on? It, Joseph was sold by his own brother, but the branch was still connected. It was still connected to God. And to show you even more so, when he was, they brothers think he's disconnected, but as he's out there and he's in this world, in this one scene and cast her eyes upon him, she wanted him to lie with her. And nobody don't have to know, but you lie with me. Genesis 39 verse 9. It says, there's none greater in this house than I. So at that time, when he's saying this particular statement right now, Pharaoh wasn't in the house. Pharaoh was out probably in another country doing business or in another city doing business. But he's saying, but right then at that particular time, he's making this statement. There is none greater in this house than I. So he's saying in, in this palace is nobody greater right now than me, even though you're there. And that's his wife. He says, neither have I, neither has he kept back anything from me but thee. So the only thing that he's saying that separates me and him is you. That's the only thing separate me and him. Are you greater than me? No, you're not greater than me. But what separates me and him, you are his wife. He says, because thou art his wife. He says, now watch how he's saying this. Now he's sitting there letting, see, this is the crazy thing. Based on equal ability, he's even saying Pharaoh not even greater than him. That Pharaoh gave him that kind of weight. You, let's read, read it again. It says, there is none greater in this house but I. And neither have you kept back anything from me but thee. So now he's saying, because thou art thy wife. So he's telling him right up front, even if Pharaoh was in the house, the only difference between him and her husband was her. That's it. Read it. It's there. <laughs> it's right there. And he, so and can I do this great wickedness, including sin against God? He ain't sin against Pharaoh. He's equal to Pharaoh. The only difference is between him and Pharaoh is her. So how can he do this great wickedness against God? <laughs> Telling you. Joseph was given favor by God and God put him in that position. The authority of the household. And his wife tried to seduce him. Joseph's thankfulness was not to Pharaoh. You can see right there. His thankful is not to Pharaoh. He just showing you the separation between Pharaoh and him. It's rise to position by God. He stayed faithful to God. And in fact, um, you get a little bit more on this. This, this, this man, uh, 
Genesis chapter 40. Verse 8, thinking about that. This is the difference. Joseph said, he says, then they, then they said unto him, have we, uh, we have dreamed a dream. And there is none interpreter of it. And Joseph said unto them, do not interpretations belong to God? I'm his servant. They belong to God. See, his thankfulness is to God because he knew that God protected him through all these trials, all these hardships. Joseph knew that his abilities and his authority was given to him by God. So he remained faithful to God even in the midst of any type of circumstance that he ran into. Any type of circumstance. But the point is, are we hypocrites? Because he said he only found wheels made up right. That's an interesting statement. He only found us made up right. So I would just show you a little bit more. Um, we're going to look at something. I want to just show you in, in Ezekiel chapter 28, looking at verse 15. We're going to find this out a little bit more that it's saying the same thing, but it's a problem that we have. It says, Thou was perfect in all thy ways from the days thou was created. In a right. <laughs> when we were created, till. See, I don't even want to say till. Iniquity was found in thee. To iniquity was found in us. As Satan, we were created perfect and upright without sin. Eventually, we fell to iniquity and sin. And we being created in the image of God, originally without sin. But sin through our own disobedience and rebellion against God. So this should even remind us of one of the most powerful, influential things in this world is people. People in this world is subject, and we got to remember we're subject to God's authority and His sovereignty. And it, we're, we were perfect in the days we were created, including God created man in His own image. In the image God created, He him, male and female created He them. And this until iniquity was found in them because He found us and wasn't no iniquity in us when we did it, but through pride and ignorance, which led us to exalt ourselves above all. And that we want to call ourselves God so that we sitting in the temple of God saying that we are God, which is foolish within all within itself. Shows you the problem. We get to see it and we want to change it. We want to change it. In fact, um, go down to Genesis and we'll go to 127. It tells you. See, these things we can't deny. It says, so God created man in his own image. In the image God created he him, male and female created he them. You can't say he didn't do this because it's right here. And in fact, the, the, the problem, we should be ashamed of ourselves. But what, what a lot of us like to do is get around places and always talk about all what good we do. Like you don't, don't worry about what happened in the past. We just we just doing good. All of a sudden, we God should be happy that I came back to him. Now you want to sing all these glorified songs. It's interesting. These things is 100% interesting all the time. In Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2, looking at verse 23, it tells us this and make sure it's clear. And this is something each and every one of us need to, need to really truly think about. For God created man to be immortal. God created man to be immortal. <laughs> Think about that. He created man to be immortal and made him in the image of his own eternity. Figure that out. It's arrogant in our ways. He created us to be in corruption. That's what he did. He created us to be his own eternity, emphasizing the eternal nature of man, which, which reinforces the idea we were created with a divine purpose and destiny. 
So how true is it? She had to put some things in place before these things happen. She had to put some things in place before they happen. Because if not, men will be very quickly to call God a liar. They, they do it. They do it religiously today. They say it without saying it. But we know this is clear. It says, now this, I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither do corruption inherit in corruption. God created man to be mortal and made him in the image of his own. Is it going crazy? Is it making sense? Interesting, isn't it? Really highly interesting. Really, 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 really interesting, isn't it? Because it even says this more. I'm going to show you something to make sure we clearly get a good understanding of this. We're going to look at uh, 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 Romans chapter 8 and verse 8. We want to get some really want to understand something. Make sure we're really clear on this because it tells you right now. It says, so then they are in the flesh cannot please God. Now this I say, brother, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So God created man to be immortal and, and made him to be uh, uh, to be to be um, in the image of his own eternity. That's interesting, isn't it? That's one hundred percent interesting. The reason that's interesting because now we're trying to figure out what is going on here. Nothing. Flesh and blood can't inherit the kingdom of God. And flesh can't please God. But He created man to be immortal. This is interesting, isn't it? The reason why this is going to be interesting because now what we're trying to do is figure out in our own minds. How do this work? How is this working? Same thing when we sit down, we see 127. So God created man in his own image and the image God created he, him, male and female created he, them. So God created man in his image. So they that are in the flesh, they can't please God because God is not flesh. Oh, I didn't know that. No, God is not flesh. Because flesh can't please God. God created man in his own image. In the image, God created he, him, male and female created he, them. So then that they that are in the flesh cannot please God. And now this I say, brother, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither do corruption inherit in corruption. However, for God created man to be mortal and made him in the image of his own eternity. Boom. We have to figure something out. Something, something's weird here. No, it's not. And we listen to people that lie to us and lie to us and lie to us and lie to us time 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 again because god plan he has a purpose for each and every one of our lives some of us not going to ever make them some of us never not going to achieve them period while it's true and we've fallen from the perfect image of beings and we're prone to sin, unable to earn our own way to God's kingdom of our own, then this same purpose that the Bible teaches us through faith, through Yahweh the Messiah or Jesus Christ, we can reconcile back to God, which is a gift of eternal life. That's something that is not just earned. You, It's a free gift because through this same thing, through sin, everybody has failed to it. Simple, straightforward. Can't get around it. The statement God created man to be immortal made in the image of his own to, own eternity. See, it's profound and even in his meaning, which is showing you the roots of the beginning of the Bible, which is in the beginning. Of the, we still trying to figure out how is this working? Because it's weird. And it tells us right here in Genesis chapter one, verse 20. It says, so God said, let us make man in our own image. After I like this, let him have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowls of the air, and over the cattle and over all the earth and every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. Boom, again. What is going on? What is happening? We, that's why I say we have to take off these carnal hats that people push, that people teach. And they try to do these catch phrases and all these crazy things. It's interesting. This is a clear passage that human beings are created in the image of God. Shadows. Meaning something is about our nature. Our nature that reflects God's nature. See something unique among all God creations. In other words, inherent and dignity is worth that it is that we being made in the image, the image, the image of God. That's interesting. Interesting. Let's go back here and just look at something. Let's go back here and look at something. Everybody with me? 
everybody with me. Hopefully nobody getting thrown off anywhere. Everybody with me. Just say, all right, I'm going to keep talking, but just stay, just stay with me. Just stay with me. We go right back over here. It says, Lord, I have found. Lo, this only have I found. God had made man upright. Yeah, he made man weird. Why? Why? Because we keep going back through the same thing. So God created man to be immortal, made him in the image of his own eternity. This dang man, we can't quite figure out. Can't quite put a finger on it. The idea that he created man to be immortal is not explicitly stating in the Bible either, do it. It rather it gives you a similitude to for us to explore through all the books and through the the, 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 the apocrypha and everything else to where we consider some of the parts of the Bible, which is we gotta understand wisdom of Solomon. That's what we really need to understand. Cause he the one made the statement. So it speaks about the idea of humans being created forever. Why? Solomon said it. He's the wisest man that ever lived. So we need to understand Solomon. He made the statement. All of them agree with it. Everybody understand it. The only one understand it, the only one that don't understand it is us. It's us. Suggest so that immortality something that is an inherited nature. So rather than the consequence of sin and rebellion, in other words, we remain faithful to God and we have the ability to live forever. It tells us that right there. It's right there. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2, verse 23. It's, say, it's saying it right there. He created man to be immortal in his own image of eternity. It's interesting. So it suggests also that as we go through the Bible, we, we have to understand which leads into this complete teaching on what we're doing here right now. The importance of seeking wisdom. Wisdom was a key thing, which is in both in Sirach, it's in the it's in the wisdom of Solomon, it's key. See, Sirach warns us against the dangers of arrogance. It urges us to seek true wisdom in humility. And the wisdom of Solomon portrays wisdom as its divine gift and enriches to where we can transform and we can receive it through inspiring to live in harmony with God, which seeks to have this highest part, this highest good and within ourselves and others. This wisdom transforms us into friends and prophets to God. Mic drop. That's it, it makes us friends and prophets of God. Others who bear witness to God's presence in our lives. That's what this does. Let me let me let me let me show you something. Let me show you more what I'm talking about. Let me show you more what I'm talking about. Trying to trying to try and not get too excited about this, but but I just want to make sure we understand this. Cause I know if I get excited, I'm start talking fast, and then I'm gonna hear it because my wife gonna tell me she's a sweetie. You were talking too fast, and I don't, I don't need that. So let's work through here. Let's work. Let's work through it. Let's work through it. So we're gonna see this in Sirach chapter sixteen, but we're gonna look at verse seventeen. Say not thou, I hide myself from the Creator, from the Lord. It's telling us that. Shall any remember me from above, remembered among so many? For I. For what is my soul among such an infinite number of creatures? Wow. If we live in according to the word of God, law's requirement, which leads us to the truth, which is it, it ends up where we go get eternal fulfillment, which reminds us that God has given and had made man to bend, and we have a freedom. We have a freedom. Write this one down. We have a freedom of choice. We have a freedom, a choice between good and evil, which shapes our very own destinies through our own actions. So since we have freedom of choice to choose good or evil, we also is also through that choice. We're going to find it is our responsibility. which comes either do we want to free gift or we want to go the other way where we can reject it. So the obedience of a seed. Back to that again. The reason why I say that and the reason why I went all through all that is something that we have to acknowledge. It's a complex. It's an interplay which, which have various factors which influences outcomes. Same thing as planting the seed. So the same with the response of the word of God it influenced the internal and going to show external factors. So we must consider the impact of man's actions which is the genetic and what they want to do. They want to create these genetic mutations which can lead us to harmful effects 
in these living organisms, which is important to understand and to cause the types of these mutations, but the same thing, to better comprehend this, the effect of the development of the functioning of these living organs that we are in today. Ultimately seeking wisdom to live in accordance with while understanding the impact and actions of a nature of this world to help us make better choices to take measures to reduce them from harm in the environment of doing this. So we need to understand a lot of things and that's what I'm trying to pack into this. So the main thing is when we see the makeup of a seed, the makeup of a seed, the seed is complex. It's a structure that's created by God. The seed is created by God. I want you to write that down. The seed created by God. Make sure you understand that within the seed, it contains the genetic information necessary. In the seed itself, it contains the necessary information within it. It has genetic information necessary and it's designed for what it's actually designed for. And if it's if inside that seed, it says it's going to be this type of plant. That's what it's going to be a plant. If it's going to be a bush, it's going to be this certain type of bush. If it's going to be a flower, it's going to be this certain type of flower. If it's going to be a tree, it's going to be this certain type of tree. If it's going to be a fruit tree, it's going to be this certain design is inside that seed. It's, that's weird. I'm telling you, that, that, that's crazy within itself. If you truly think about it, that's 100%. Carnal level, crazy. All that genetic information is in there. You can go outside right now. You can look at if you got a fruit tree out there. You go out there and look at a fruit tree, and you get the and when you when you get a fruit off of there, look at the seed. All the genetic information necessarily for the design of that tree to be another one is inside that seed. All of it to do the same to replicate what it just did. What you see in this doing. That's crazy. <laughs> I'm talking. That's crazy. Is within the seed you can same find same fine thing like you find with a human. It'd be like an embryo, uh, embryo, which is an immature plant. The same thing which shoots forth and then it's developed into a seed which is planted and then it's called this embryo, which is also in the womb, which around the seed that helps to shield from the environment of the sun. And I'm telling you, this this is crazy. This is crazy when you get into how something is made up, especially when you be meditating. I guess you you be meditating on that a lot. Yeah, yeah. But hey, it's all right because the embryo is coated with the seed and contains the supply which has nutrients and the energy which from the starches of oil, proteins and all these other things to sustain the development until it can establish root in the system, which is it 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 it, 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 it photosized the same thing of its own, which is the exact composition of those nutrients, which can vary depending on which type of plant and conditions. Seeds contains all the con- essential components needed. The plant develop and thrive and in, including the genetic information that protect the structures of the source of the nutrient within the any in, within the seed itself. The energy that was created by God. I'm talking, I'm talking this is crazy. I want to show you something to make sure we understand what's going on. And show you this right here, not that one. We want numbers. Numbers twenty three nineteen. Just to show you the point. It reason it sounds crazy to me, but not crazy to God. It says God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Has he said and shall not he do it, or has he spoken and shall not make it good? And yeah, everything he did, he made it good, and everything he say, he done. See, cause so showing that God that provided his seed and is not the seed of man. God provided his seed, therefore he cannot lie like man do. Nor is he subject to remember what man said there that lied about the structures. While mutations is part of man's evolutionary, evolutionary process that has nothing to do with God. Lying is understood as being a false statement, an assertion made with the intentions of deceiving someone. That's what lying is. That's what lying, actually, I'm going to tell you what, better yet. Let's get let's get this a little bit closer. Let's get a little bit closer. Uh, Exodus chapter twenty, and and we see something in verse sixteen. You see this all the time. Thou shalt not f- bear false witness against thy neighbor, but, but we see it all the time. Dang. The commandment speaks of the importance about honesty and truthfulness, which is our interaction, which emphasizes the integrity. This is why we had changed the genetic makeup of a seed. 
the concept of the lion. It explores our spiritual sense throughout the Bible, showing that Proverbs, even a plain example, a lion lips is an abomination to God. Lion lips is an abomination to God. And we'll still sit there and do it. And won't think, won't think twice about it. Won't think nothing about it. Proverbs chapter 12, looking at lion lips are abomination to the, to the Lord, to the spirit of God. This, but they that deal truly are his delight. Lying is not just a violation to the social norms, but it's ethical standards. It's a spiritual offense and displeasing to God. One of the main reasons why it's so hard and why we got to understand why he's saying it the way he's saying it is two things. See, we have a lot of people, and the same thing, people go, well, I know such and such. No, well, I want you to think of self. Push it. Don't put, don't, I don't, don't sugarcoat it. In, I just tell it to you like it really is. In, in Luke chapter 16, verse 13, verse 13, tells you right here. No servant can serve two masters, two masters, two teachers. See, and this is one of the biggest problems within Israel or the children of Israel. That's one of the biggest problems, not just them, but in any group that everybody has. Hands down. See, the same thing is when you're eating from many different tables, you're going to get many different pieces. You're going to get many different dialects. You're going to get many different understandings. This is the big problem that we have today. We have many people, what they'll do, they'll, they'll come here, they'll get so much off our table, then they'll go somewhere else and get something off their table, go somewhere else and get something off their table. This is why I say, if you eat up with another table, go to that other, I don't say stay here. You, you, nobody never heard me say that. You can't say, well, I say, if you, between this, between us and whoever else, stay with us. You never heard me say that. If I tell, I tell you right up front, if you, is is listening to us to KJBU in the House of Law to be Israel, and you listen to I don't care who else you listen to. I will always tell you listen to them. Why? I don't need to mix up. I don't one hundred percent confusion over here. The reason why is what happens. See, we didn't had we didn't have some of the most popular online channels teachers. Come over here and watch, and they say, "Well, this guy, they they talk a whole lot of spiritual stuff." We, I don't know what they talking about. Exactly the point, but don't. But we don't want you to bring that doctrine or that understanding here and come into one of our studies, and then you try to eject your your understanding, and we're gonna be one hundred percent against it. The same thing anyone to tell you. I'm real cool. I'm real cool. I'm a laid back type of person, but you bring in some false doctrine, you get you get a different Elder Johnson, because I, I don't have time for it. I don't have the time to play with false doctrines. So that's why we sit there. No servant can serve two masters. They can't serve two. two. Either you're going to hate one and love the other or else you're going to do it. You cannot do it. It's impossible. It's an impossible thing. That's an impossible thing to do. We're not here to play those games. We're not here. People think, see, people think what we hear. That's why it's certain things I do not do. You don't hear me when I come over here, when I come on. You don't hear me, you know, you have most people as they talk and they say, hey, if you like what you're doing, hit the like button. No, if you like it, you like it. That's that's a, that's between you and, and you. I don't, I don't ask you to do that. I don't ask you to join. If you want to join, you join. The reason I, I do that for that particular reason. If you believe you get in truth here, yeah, you, you should join. You should join wherever you believe you get in truth. If you like it, then you like it. If you don't, okay, hey, I don't know what you don't like. For so we have this issue. So you can't serve two. So since you can't serve two, if you want to get doctrine elsewhere, then you go get doctrine elsewhere. Don't come here. It's that simple. It's not threatening, any, but it's the easiest way because all it's going to do is cause confusion. That I promise you. 
it's going to cause you 100% confusion. And that's why he tells you right here, no man can serve two masters. Either you're going to hate one and, and you're going to love the other. That's why that's going to happen. It's going to happen automatically. And one of the main things is, is this, that one is good and one is evil. One is good and one is evil. Plain and simple. See, because he, he said a quote. Actually, let me go to the quote because I know I mess, might mess it up. Might mess it up. I don't want to mess it up. In John chapter 8, verse 44. And it tells you this. It says, Ye are your father the devil, and the lust of your father you would do. He was also a murderer. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh the lie, he speaketh of himself. He speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. This is the thing about that. This is the whole thing about that. That's simple. See, what people do, they want to do these things, but lying men characteristic from creations of weakness also shows a demonic trait. It emphasizes the, the, it emphasizes the dangers of deception and need to resist the temptations of people like that of the devil. See, men have set out lying as a normal, as a norm of his own creation. It's really weird. I'll tell you something that's really weird. You, you can even see this. You can even find people, channels, you can find, and they do it every year. They'll tell you one thing. They'll say, did you know that they hold one of the most honest people in, in, in this world that came through here? Don't you know they hold that as Martin Luther King? I kid you not. See, some people who just come over this, really, what's wrong with Martin Luther King? One of the biggest liars ever walked the face of this earth. One of the same men who actually denied God. Because when he says, out of a mountain of despair, he's telling you that God forsakes you. Right up front. He's telling you, he said, out of a mountain of despair, out come a stone of hope. He said, even though he came for God, out of a mountain of despair, he is your hope now. God God forsakes you. Despair. Go look, go look it up. And he, you can see it in his statement that ever lived. And he was a fool. The reason why you got Planned Parenthood in your neighborhoods is because of him. He got he won an award for that. He won a Margaret Singer Award in 1963. All this stuff, you can go to their site and see it there. This man was a bona fide fool. An educated fool. You can't get his kids, his nieces, who I talked to once. You can't get none of them to sit there, to sit before me, to, to, to sit there to say it any other way. Because they know they got to answer that. Because that's all I want to know. Why did he say it out of a mountain of despair? Out come a stone of hope. Because he's the stone of hope. The mountain that despairs you is God. All through the Bible, God describes himself as a mountain. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's a crack up. It's a crack up. We need to let God be God and truth be truth and righteousness be righteousness. Honesty, integrity in our lives where we see God. In fact, um, when we look at some things and we understand exactly what they are. In uh, Matthew chapter 20. In verse 28. And same thing. People just come over. You ain't never seen no Martin. Please go look at some of the videos that they probably didn't remove. On Martin. All not speaking of. We showing you documentation on what he did. Documentation on what that man did. Unique. Unique guy. And you should wonder why. They won't even play his tapes. For another 40 something years. They're not going to even let you hear his audio tapes. The high he. 20 verse 28 it says even as even comparing the son of man came not to be ministered but to minister and to give life and ransom for many he's telling you right in front so so people like to give a, a, a measurement of greatness but he's telling you he didn't come here for you to minister to him at all and this is why you see this here where 
But everybody, well, yeah, I can sit there. We can exegete stupidest thing in the world. We can exegete the scriptures. In, no, you can't exegete. That's that's a, that's man interpretation. Well, we use how many? Yeah, man interpretation. In fact, uh, when you're looking at Romans chapter 12, and 1, it says, I beseech thee, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. He didn't come to be ministered to. He didn't come for you to minister to him. You keep learning different parts. So the same thing is, when we see last week with Sirach and Wisdom of Solomon, it reinforces the spiritual meaning of a siege, which is reminds us of the importance to where we need to have the fear and desire of God, and we need to come to repentance, understand the simplicity of God and his humanity of his heart, which is the mercy of God towards us, which is the word of God. Now for us to be returning to our vomit and sin, and we need to be seeking righteousness. So mutation can happen in quite a few ways. And actually, I might have to stretch out one to make sure it works. I might have to stretch out one to make sure it works. So I want to show you this in Genesis chapter 1. And let me see. But in Genesis chapter 1, still won't let me hold it. It said, God said, Let the earth bring forth grass and herb, yielding seeds and fruit trees after his kind, and whose seed within itself in the earth it was so. In verse 12, and the earth brought forth grass and herb, yielding seed. Actually, I'll tell you what. Let me see. Last time I did this. Let me see. This thing, yeah, we need to get another one. We need to get another one. But um, now we want to sit there. But the main thing is, it emphasizes us in that Genesis chapter 1, verse 11 and 12, that God created these living organisms. Any mutation that occurs that deviates from that original design. I want you to understand what I'm saying. He created it to be of his own. Let's see if I still get it. Let me see. No. Okay. But, well, verse 11, as it says, but the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind and true trees Yielding fruit tree, yielding fruit who see within itself after his kind and God saw that it was good. So we see that there. It's showing exactly what we were talking about. These these seeds, they produce their own thing and it's so everything is written inside of them that is already instructed what to do. So we should have no problem messing around with some mutation because if it deviates from what is in there, then it's a mutation was playing with God's creation. Let's 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 get some understanding here. Let's get some understanding here. We we need your pens and papers out. Make sure you have your pens and papers out. Make sure you have your pens and papers out because we want to understand the word of God as a whole. We want to understand, understand the word of God as a whole on what I'm saying. And um uh, I'm just gonna get it off of this is and I don't know why. Yeah, they just had to put this on because they're gonna get on my nerve. Okay, so we just want to understand something. The seed. So the seed need to be planted. I want you to write this down because you might have to come back and look at it again. But the seed which is planted, planted, and it's planted in soil. Now, the soil provides them, supposedly, we want to, so the soil provides nutrients. Nutrients is spiritual context, which we can understand for as these things that nourish the soul. Just keep it that way which it helps the individual of the seed to thrive. So this is just the physical body. So it needs the balance of nutrients to stay healthy and to stay strong, the spiritual lives that we need. So we need these, these nutrients to help us to flourish. So the same with the spiritual seed that people seek. So I want you to understand something. Wisdom. I want you to write this down to where we can understand just the, the understanding on the similitude on what he wants us to understand here. Wisdom, this gives you the ability. Wisdom gives you the ability to discern truth, to make sound decisions. 
So if you don't have wisdom, you're gonna make foolish decisions. So that's telling you right up front what it is. But wisdom gives you the ability to discern truth and make sound decisions. So seeking wisdom can help you navigate through complexities of life to make decisions that you can be in line with the value and principles that which is right. That's wisdom. Same thing we're dealing with dirt in a seed. So love. Put down love because we know love means promise. Understand what this is saying. Write it down. Make sure you have it. If you got to come back and, and play it again, play it, pause it, understand it. Because love, this is the deep affection that's care that one have for another. However, love is a promise with cultivating sense where love is compassion, helping you build meaningful relationships, which is equitable within this world. Based on what? based on a promise on he's saying he's going to do this. This is what helps us understand what it is. Carnal, spiritual, getting the understanding, finding out what is going on. Gratitude, we gotta see that this is a practice. Gratitude, a practice. Gratitude, a practice. They help us recognize between a seed and dirt. Seed and dirt. We just get the basic understanding to what we need to do and appreciating good things in our lives. Practicing gratitude can help us cultivate a sense of contentment, joy, even in difficult times. This is what it does. This is what it does. The main one, forgiveness. People, oh, forgiveness, forgiveness. This is the act of letting go of anger because you have to release these certain things that is not good that it comes into contact to, which can be lying and everything else. So it has the act of letting go of this anger, resentment towards others who have even wronged us. So we have to practice the lifestyle of forgiveness to help us find peace and move forward. Same thing. If you walk by and cook a flower, do the flower come back up and try to look up, look you up? No, that flower have to automatically just keep doing, just be a flower. It can't sit there and turn over there and say, you knucklehead. It can't turn to you and say, what's wrong with you, man? It can't turn to you and say, do you have a problem? It's just going to keep being a flower, so, which comes with faith. That comes with faith because you have the belief that you have this greater thing within yourself. Cultivating the sense of faith to help you find the meaning of your purpose in life gives you the strength to where you can face the challenge and overcome all your obstacles. Yeah. So you see this nutrients of wisdom, love, gratitude, forgiveness, and faith can all cultivate you and your inner peace and your purpose in life. So how did this work out? Water. How does this work out? Water. You need to put water. Just, just write water. <laughs> what is water? Water is associated with, with, with who? The water is associated with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the is the is is is, is the uh, is the separated body. Water is the separated body. That's what we're dealing with now. Now we're dealing with the separated water. Water. Reason why. When you're dealing with water and you got to water the separated body, the Holy Spirit, which is a source that holds the seed of the spiritual knowledge, which has the guidance in the Gospel of John even tells us about that. The Gospel of John tells us. Actually, let me tell you what. Let's go there. Let's go there. And we're going to go to John. We're going to look at John chapter 4, verse 14. We're going to look at John chapter 4, but we want to look at verse 14. Get a better understanding of what's going on. And why we have to sit there, it says, But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up unto everlasting life. But we want to understand it's a separated body because it's a seed that you was given that's in there and he has to water it with that, not going around from place to place Every uh, building, the building, all this crazy. That's not what it's for. So we got to understand this couple of things. We want to write this down also. We want to write down a few things to understand. So now we got with this water, you're going to get oxygen, the seed. So you need oxygen, oxygen, like the breath, same thing. So we want to understand that spiritually. So spiritually, you want to understand one thing, but we got to look at it carnally. So I'm going to talk to them carnal things so you can understand spiritually what I'm talking about. So the same thing, spiritually, germination is seen as a parable. Let's look at germination, parable. The reason why, now, is germination in the Bible? No, 
because I just told you, I got to make you understand what it is. I can use some other words in the Bible, but then you still wouldn't know what I'm talking about. But germination, most people know what germination means. So we got to use germination. So germination is seen as a parable, which is when you see this germination, you got to look at the germination as a parable. When you're looking at it as a parable, you look at a new beginning. When you look at a new beginning, you're looking at a growth. When you're looking at a growth, you're looking at a transformation of dormancy or you see the other as a similitude, which is a spiritual journey, awakening of self-realization. Everybody with me on that? Just want to make sure everybody with me on the same page. I just need to make sure you're on the same page. I'm going to keep moving, but I just want to make sure eyes just let me know you're on the same page. That's all I need to know. And we're going to keep moving forward because this is helping you to do and understand what the Bible is saying. So I'm using some of those words to just help you get what I'm talking about. Meaning this more so spiritual, spiritual traditions. Now, when you're looking at spiritual traditions, you got to also associate that with germination because it's understood spiritual tradition with the germination is already written in on the seed. The structures is inside the seed. The understanding of the rebirth all is going to just come all together for you. So then this is a similitude is a symbol of a of a cycle of a nature of a nature that you're going to have. It's going to have life and death. Life and death it is often used to mark the passing of a season of a cycle. Down to the forces of nature that bring out this new growth or transformation. Why? Because germination. Germination is seen as a symbol of awakening of consciousness. Germination is seen as a symbol of consciousness, meaning the same thing as a parable. All the same thing. But I'm just giving it to you on the carnal side because we got a lot of people over here that's carnal don't get it so he'd be saying what are you talking about i don't know what you're talking about but this way you know what i'm talking about the ones who've been over here new sight perspectives understanding that it can be seen in similar to which is process which is self-discovery and transformation to where you can cultivate yourself to a greater awareness and insight of your true nature and now your purpose in life so being a follower of christ germination being a follower of christ germination is often associated with the resurrection of christ now we're getting it. Now we're getting it. Seen as a similitude as a spiritual renewal, which is life triumph over death. So this germination can be seen as this powerful spiritual symbol of this new beginning and growth and transformation, which represents our emergence in this new life and state of dormancy to, to, our, to our potentiality, which is a main, main, mainly like a metaphor of a spiritual journey of awakening to where now we can realize connection in the world and taps into the transformative power of this new growth and our change. So all that to say dirt and soil is complex. It's a mixture of organic and inorganic materials such as decomposed plants, fecal matter, animal matter, mineral matter, micronism. It provides all these hospitable things in the environment where seed is rooted in there to develop. And if you take on those nutrients that is there, you know something's going to come out incorrectly. So soil provides the plant to take hold to, but you need water, which contains the knowledge and understanding, which is the essential process as it's access to their roots in addition. So we got it all together, but the, but, but the plant provides the oxygen, which we need for respiration that converts into soil and the energy in our form. So dirt and soil provides the physical support for the root, anchoring them in the place where it's preventing them from being washed away or damaged by the wind or the, the, the environmental factors that we can run into. It protects the plant from the temperatures and buffering them from the heat the sun, all these things. So the seed need to be planted in dirt because soil provides them. Soil provides them to hold the container of water in the ox. So this is a complex. So dirt and soil is complex dynamics. Same thing where we, we in right now, our body is made up of dirt. Our body is made up of dirt, but some of us has let the, the, the microorganisms change us. To, to mutate into different things. That's what's going on. Let's look at something. I want to show you something. Um, 
Let's go here. To understand what's going on. In Deuteronomy chapter 32. 32 verse 2. Same thing. Looking at water. It says, my doctrine shall drop as rain. He says, my speech shall destall as dew as a small rain upon tender herb in as so in comparing the showers upon the grass. So he's, so he's telling you exactly what he's doing. He's telling you exactly what he's doing, but we got to keep in mind what we are to do. But a lot of us don't do this. Same as 11, uh, Numbers 11, verse 9. He's in the camp, and, and, and when the dew fell upon the camp in the night, and manna fell upon it. Drop of water, bread and water. Bread and water, consistently. Bread and water, consistently. So we need to understand he's given us the provisions and everything to sustain even the children of Israel in, in the wilderness. So these passages emphasizes the importance of trusting in God provisions and guidance in all aspects of our lives. Not in some aspect, in all aspects of our lives. That's what it's for. So let's look at something. Let's, let's, let's go a little bit deeper with this to be doing. In, in 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 Isaiah, he speaks something that's pretty good. He speaks something that's really, really good. We see these in verses uh, 55, 10, and 11. It's pretty good. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but whether the earth and maketh it go forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Saying the same thing. Water, bread. Interesting. This is interesting. So shall my word go forth out of my mouth and it shall not return unto me void. But it shall ain't where to I send it. So the problem so the question becomes that do you have the word of God in you? See, people will sit there, a lot of people will claim it and don't have it. Many people will claim it and do not have it. The reason why you, you, you see people claim things, but when they claim it, they can't tell you nothing about it. All they can sit there and do is tell you certain verses. They can't tell you about it. They'll tell you about certain verses. In John chapter 1, in verse I mean, John chapter 15, verse 1. Tell you, he says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. So we need to stay connected, because he's going to give us a similitude as we read down. And I'm going to read it down, but we need to understand this. As we go down, he's going to say some things. It might be harsh, but we have to understand, because he's not here to take prisoners. It says, every branch in me, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, so it don't bear no works and takes it away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purge it. This is why some of us is, is purged. That he bring forth more fruit. This is why when he purge it, he's also going to cut off people who's connected to you. That's why he's saying this. Everyone, if you're starting to bar, if you're going to start bearing fruit, going to purge you that purging is going to cut off some of your family members it's going to cut off some of your friends it's going to cut off some of your relatives it's going to cut them off it's telling you right there every branch that bears fruit he purge it that he may bring forth more fruit it's going to cut them off so he can bring in some more that want to bear fruit but he goes on more with this when ye are clean through the word, which I have spoken unto you, abide in me and I in you, as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself. Exactly what he been saying the entire time. It, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye ex, except ye abide in me, I am and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can't do nothing. 
See, people sit there, well, that's kind of arrogant. Then buy. Buy Felicia. It's, it says that simple because it's the word of God. See, all of a sudden you, 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 you're, you're created and you're born. And then all of a sudden now your poop don't stink. See, he said, if you don't bring forth fruit, you can't do nothing. If any man abide not in me, he is cast as a branch and with and, uh, and, and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire. And they are burned. Exactly what's going to happen. But you got a lot of people that's going to happen to them. A lot of this go down a little bit more. It says, if you abide in me and my words and abide in you, and I ask you of you, and ye shall, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father's glorified, that ye bear much fruit, and ye shall be my disciples, as the Father hath loved me, he promised me, so have I loved you. Continue in my love, my promise. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love. Even as I have kept my father's commandment and abide in his love, these things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment that you see so being very, really, really, really upfront, really upfront. So the spiritual growth, this development that you're looking for, everyone want to sit there and focus on the importance of obedience through the spirit of God following his instructions for our spiritual growth and our prosperity of knowledge. Now people talking about, well, we're going to give money this and money that. But the blessings and abundance of the store that we need, the idea of the spiritual growth and what we're looking for. So the same thing as we look through these passages, we see the importance of knowing and recognizing him. It's a plan. It's already written in there. It's a plant within the seed. The understanding that discussed this solemn agreement, it's a contract within the seed between two parties, shows the development of a mutual promise and obligation. God established a covenant, the same as he did with Noah, the same he did with Abraham, the same he did with the Israelites. So in the Old Testament, you even see Yahweh Shai comes with a covenant and the importance of obedience of God's commands. So we see this importance of the obedience of a seed the spiritual growth, the transformation that comes with the divine promise and the obligation that comes with choosing God but remaining connected to the Spirit of God following His instruction and being obedient to His commands. Stupidity. We should be reminded that we need to follow God's commandments and live in obedience to Him. So even when you see the new, the word new, N-E-W, new, the word new, the new word new, new is it is telling you something that was newly made or was being introduced so it become new to you and it's showing you that it's newly made or introduced but people want to sit there and come up with these crazy 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 things we got to stop that we got to stop these things it was actually let me tell you what let's go here let's let's look at some more let's look at more to where we can understand exactly where i'm coming from and we look at this in Isaiah chapter 43, and we're going to look at this part in verse 19. 19. Verse 19, it says, Behold. So we know behold means remember. So it just says, Remember, I will do a new thing, full thought. So either is newly made or being introduced to you because Isaiah 1 3 it implies to all Israel. <laughs> <laughs> you go look that up and see what that means. So he said, do a new thing. Now, it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? You, you see, why you got it? Why you think you got that question mark there? Why you think the question mark? Shall you, shall ye know it? Shall ye, shall ye not know it? So is it newly made or is it being introduced to you my covenant have I not changed nor would I alter the thing that has gone out of my lips yeah okay this <laughs> I'm telling you we can't get out of our own way on this stuff 
We cannot get out of our own way on none of this. But this is our problem. This is what we get tied up into. In John, um, John chapter 13, verse 34, we're going to speak about some more things that we really need to pay attention to and hold on to. In verse 34, it's going to tell us something. The new commandment I give to you that you love one another. Is it new? Or is it newly made? Or is it being introduced to you? Because we were stupid. Or we was ignorant to it. It's interesting, isn't it? See, they become interesting, do it? See, he's telling you about a new commandment, really, that you love one another. <laughs> he's reminding you of something. I'm, I'm gonna have you something, but I'm gonna let y'all look at some of this and go look at it, look it up for y'all. How we, much we should be embarrassed about ourselves. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. I'm going to show you why. But I'm going to show you why we should be embarrassed about ourselves. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 8, it says, Therefore, for that reason, if, providing any man be in Christ. So if you're in Christ, he is a new creature. That's interesting. That's interesting. Because it got another, it got another meaning with that one. He's renewed. It's a renewal. New creature. Old things. So you can see, old things are passed away. Okay, wait a minute. If it's brand new, if it's brand new, it won't say anything about old things that passed away because it's new. Everybody follow me there. So I, want, I want everybody to really understand where this is coming from. If it's saying you are a new creature in Christ, and if it's saying it's brand new and just created, it has no reason to say old things. It has no reason to say that. Everybody understand that. I just want to make sure we just really, because it's new. But it says old things. So it says, remember, all things become new. All things. Things become new. You see how he constantly keep going back and hitting us. Keep going, uh, take that with you. Uh, take that with you. That's why this keep happening. But this is the 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 the, the way Paul speaks to us. So if you're new in Christ, old things have passed away. All things become new. Yeah, because you got a new way of living. Being renewed. So it's telling us what we need to be doing. So if you're following Christ, you're a new creature. You're a new creature. That's why that's why it's telling you that. We're all on the same page. We see this over there in um Revelation chapter twenty one, verse one and two. You see the same identical thing here. He says, I saw the new heaven, new heaven and new earth. The first heaven and first earth was passed away. There were no more sea. And I, John, saw the new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Wow. You see how this, this renewal, all these renewal things. It's right, it's right in front of us the entire time. But the main thing is we get caught up and we like to listen to people as they talk nonsense to where they just try to part you from. Why? Because they want to water the seed with something else. They want to water your seed with something else that is not good for you. So the issue is the seed that you have that comes from God. That's the issue. And, and, and I want to present that to you. I want to present that seed to you. In Amos chapter 3, verse 1, it tells us this, and this is this is part of the problem with the seed. This is the problem with the seed that you have. If you if you're uh if you're a child from from from, from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, if you're one of those and you was given the seed came from God, and you're gonna see why he's making this statement, we're getting ready to, to look a little bit closer at it, and then we're gonna look at it spiritually. It says, hear the word of the Lord. So all the way you see it. So it's saying, hear the word of the Lord of the Spirit of God, which is Jehovah, have spoken against you. 
So we see this as a problem. We see this as a problem. He has spoken against us, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought you up out of the land of Egypt, saying, you only have I known of all the family, so I will punish you for all your iniquities. So the same thing as we learned last week. Israel have two connotations. One, your whole servants. But he's using in the one that you learned last week. That's why I gave it to you last week so you can meditate on it and let it just marinate. So he's saying, hear the word of the Spirit of God has spoken against you, O children of the ones who struggle against Yahweh, who struggles with Yahweh, who struggles with God, who struggles with the Creator. It's, it's right here. Against the whole family. So, am I excluded? No, I'm included. It don't say with the whole family except him. I'm included. And he makes sure we're clear on this. So he says, so therefore I will punish you for all your iniquities. Because the main thing, like I said before, we had a problem. And we are we going to run now. We're going to try to keep from it, but we can't get around it. In Isaiah chapter 1, verse 3, it says, An ox know of his own, and ass is massacre. But ones who struggle with Yahweh, <laughs> but ones who struggle with Yahweh, ones who struggle with Yahweh, do not know. An ox, I, I want you all to just think about that. An ox, no it's on it. An ass is master script. I want y'all to really understand, this is talking about animals walking on four legs. I want you to really understand it. These, this is animals walking on four legs. Don't have the intelligence to do anything that you're capable of doing. It don't have the capability to say anything with an, with a, with another cow. To talk intellectually with a with a with a with a cow, to talk intellectually with their with their calves. I want you to really think about that. A ox, all he know is you put a harness on him and he will just start you you pull wherever you want to pull him. That's all you know what to do. But it's telling you an ox knows his owner and an ass is master career. But ones who struggles with Yahweh do not know. We, we I don't, <laughs> before I get mad, I need to really get off of this. Cause I see, I get, see this, this would hang, this kind of stuff hangs. And, and it just shows the ignorant how we go around people we Israel, we Israel. Oh, I'm Israel. Yeah, you just showing your ignorance. You showing pure ignorance. Pure one hundred percent ignorance. It's so the seed is just like a football. Just think about a football. So we need to. Uh, Read the rest of this, but it, I urge you to do that. But we need to remember what we did and return to God because it's highlight what our responsibility in our relationship because we're supposed to have a special relationship with God and we do everything to desecrate it. Everything to desecrate it. And we don't think nothing about it. In fact, um, I'll show you this in, in Deuteronomy chapter 10. We're going to look at something. Because he's saying the same thing here. He's saying the same thing. It says, and now, you know that he ain't saying Jehovah's servants. You know he ain't saying that. You know, I know some of y'all say, he's saying it right here. No, no, it's not saying that. 
it got to be. Please say it's saying. Please say it's. I know it's in Paleo Hebrews. It's saying Jehovah's servant. No, it ain't saying that. Take a wild guess what it's saying. <laughs> you take a wild guess what it's saying. Take a really wild guess what that just said. Ones who struggle with Yahweh. And now ones who struggle with Yahweh. What do if the spirit of God require of thee? You really, you really, can you go look at the verse again and see did it really say that? I looked at it. Looked at it a couple of times. You going to keep saying the same thing unless you want me to cross it out. We still going to say the same thing. But I can cross it out but it's going to say the same thing. He's <laughs> gonna say the same thing. So he's saying, so what's required of us? But to fear the, the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, to love him and to serve the Lord thy God with all that heart and all that soul. So we have to do the Spirit of God and walk in all his ways to love him. <laughs> and to walk in all his way with all the heart and all that we, 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 we Israel. I'm, I'm Israel. You, you should be you, you know what I mean you should be embarrassed to even try to put that name on you to say that you're Jehovah's servant. You should be embarrassed to say that. Because you're nothing like him. We do everything contrary. We need to really understand what we are doing. <laughs> I'm telling you, boy, we, we get something, then we think our poop don't stink. The rules are simple. The rules are simple. Say so what's required of you. We, the rule we can grow in, in the ways of God and walk in all those ways of righteousness and, and promise him and to serve the spirit of God through study, showing ourselves approved, teaching our children in the ways and not bearing grudges against the children. of. And he planted all this. And when he returned for harvest, he appeared and it should, it should be just that. So the fruit of the field is edible. So we got to remember what Yahweh word. We got to see, we got to remember what he said. We have to remember what he said. Actually, I'm going to show you what he said. I'm going to show you because he's going to show you in a parable. Well, I want to show you what he said. And we'll see this in Luke chapter 8, verse 11. He's been saying this the entire time. Now the parable is this. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Yeah. You want to tell you what? I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you why I had a problem. I'm going to tell you why I got a problem with this. How many of us? Because me into me too. I can't even say how many of you guys. No, how many of us has sat there in a building, watched on TV? Heard on the radio, a man or a woman sit there and say, sow a seed. And we went into our pockets that they had trained us like dogs. And we come out with a checkbook or some money and we give it to them. How many of us have done that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm going to tell you the worst part. This verse been there the entire time. This verse been there the entire time. The seed is the word of God. And we sat right there, went into our pockets. Well, you guys got a soul seed into this ministry. You got it. It's right there. It's look on look on look on your desk. Look on your it's right there. Look on your podium. It's right there. The seed is what you got it. But we sit right there and go in our pocket <laughs> and give it to them. And give it to them. Our bodies the, our bodies is the dirt that's buried in the let me show it to you. you can't get around this. Can't get around this. 
we look at this in uh, Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. You can't get around it. And the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground. So the Spirit of God formed man from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and he became a living soul. This this is why I say, so this is why, so now y'all see what my problem is. Everybody see what the problem is, but I have to bring this to us, and we have to present this before all the people. We have to present this before all Israel. So you see, well, let's look at this a little bit closer. In John chapter 6, and we're going to look at verse 63. And see it. It is the spirit that quickeneth. <laughs> because the seed is the word of God. <laughs> it's the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profit nothing. The words that I speak, they are spirit. So we should be worshiping in that way in their life but we sitting there we give him we give him flesh the little kid you just call come come up call me stupid they can't be lying they, they, they telling the truth they ain't gave no money i did say you used to be stupid i have to say yeah yeah i was stupid you can't say i wasn't because I did that right there what you see I did that the parable is to see the words that he speak their life so all I had to do is pay attention to the word of God but I didn't and I had the book in my hand <laughs> I'm telling you Elder Lynn used to talk about, he say we used to use it for uh, 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 clothes like 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 um like accessories, we having the Bible like an accessory. Now I, now I did read mine, but it was still an accessory because I didn't read it. I didn't put these together. I didn't put those together, so I was just as dumb as a rock. I was just as dumb as a rock. God formed man from the dust of the ground, brewed into his nostrils, breast of light, he became a living soul. This describes the creation now, it emphasizes the unique which is created. So when we're looking at the spiritual side, we see how he proposed in this purpose on what he created him for, the term even dirt, letting him to where we know spiritually of the multitude of these atoms. These atoms which represent the mass of people. So the ground carries this spiritual understanding and it's cursed. It's waste. Because you already see what's down there. You already see what's down there. Look at all the waste that fecal matter and all that then came through the dirt. Leads to the ultimate death. In fact, uh, let's, let's look at something. Let's look at something. I know everybody's sitting there, man, this is kind of tough. Yeah, it's tough. We have to we have to look at this and understand what's going on. In in Second Hadrees chapter five, verse twenty seven. Cause we just well, we winding this on down and we're gonna be finished. Verse twenty seven. It says, For all with one family. He had a problem with one family. And out of all the people, out of all the multitude of people, he has gotten need one people. One family. The ones who Struggles with God. And unto this people whom thou lovest, thou giveth the law that is approved of all. So they are not all Israel which are of Israel. So this offers the richness of the spiritual understanding, the understanding of, of what we need to really be doing. I want to show you something real quick and before we go out. I want to show you something so we can get just a basic understanding of what's happening. In in second address, we're gonna look at something in chapter three, verse five. I want you to see something. To show you Adam. It says, In that given Adam, that given a body unto Adam without a soul. Him the breath of life and made and he was made a living before thee. Exactly the point. So this this showing you he he formed Adam. It's showing you just right up front. But it gets even better. Let's drop down to verse ten. 
And it came to pass. You know, I don't say I don't like that. She as soon as he said that, all right. All I gotta do is see it. I don't even have to see past. They can block all that. But as soon as that, and it came to pass, it ain't too good. It came to pass. Every one of them, every pass in every in in every of them, that death was to Adam. So was the flood to these. I told you we can't get around it. This drop down. You go back. You can read the whole chapter, but it ain't good. It's not good. For for the first bearing a wicked heart. So the first time bearing a wicked heart. And trans was overcome. And so be all that are born of him. If you came from Adam, he's telling you exactly what happened. But you have people who you say they don't they this never happened to them. They'll tell you this never happened to them. So as we're looking at this and understanding what's going on. We'll see when we're looking at Second Andreas chapter 4, verse 30, he's going to make sure some clarifying things that we need to really understand exactly when he's talking about a particular people. And he's telling us in Second Andreas chapter 4, verse 30, it says, For a grain of the evil seed have been sown into the heart of Adam, and from the beginning how much ungodliness has it brought up until this time? So how much shall ye, it yet bring forth until the time or the threshing becomes. See, this is, you see how this is getting really serious. This is getting extremely serious. Stop in a minute here, because I just want to make sure you understand something. I want to make sure you understand something. In Second Andreas chapter 14 and verse 11, Jacob had 12 sons. It says, for the world is divided into 12 parts, and the tenth part of it is gone already, and a half of a tenth part. So it's the chosen people that is out there. And we put in, we put in a position that cannot be changed. And we need to understand that in its entirety. We have to follow the, the exact direction that is inside that seed. In Second Andreas chapter seven, verse eleven, it says, "Because for their sakes it was made, I made this world." Adam transgressed my statutes; then was decreed that is now done. We had to follow the exact rules and regulations. That is inside that seed. If we sit there, we start dealing with these genetic GMOs. These things, I promise you, we will not make it. You want to play with NIV Bibles, NKJV Bibles, ESV Bibles, NLT Bibles, CSV Bibles, NET Bibles, and so forth to worship Satan. They teach you clearly how to worship Satan. And if you're, if you're not clear in understanding, you will fall to that. So we need to clearly understand exactly what is going on. We need to really understand how to go through this Bible and follow and be that seed, because right now we are in the womb of the world. We're going to sprout up. Either we're going to sprout up as a weed, or we're going to sprout up as a fruit tree. If we don't have fruit on that tree, you are going to die. So, in meditating on scriptures, seeking out, making sure you water in the seed of God, through your daily lives. He provide them. I do them here. We provide teachings over at KJBU every day. We make sure that it's done. To where you can properly water your seed. If you choose not to. I mean, you don't see nobody sitting there forcing you to do anything. But the main thing is. A lot of us. Is going to have a problem. 
So hopefully that you guys understood that as we go through it. So we need to remember that you are given a responsibility. We must use them wisely. Be responsible, be mindful, because it's going to impact a lot of things of future generations. So we need to cultivate this and let this gratitude, understanding, and everything come with it. So hopefully through this, that each and every person understood what went on. So what I will do is um, I'm going to go, um, I'm going to open up a Zoom for, for one minute. I need to um, make sure one thing. Uh, give me one second and uh, we'll take care of that real quick. I thought I had it set and I didn't, but that's okay. So hopefully that each and every person understood what went on to where each and every one of you guys can be one that the Most High is looking for in these last days. So that's why we, we do what we do here. And, um, and the same thing is, um, I do want to make one announcement because we will be doing another teaching. Um, it's going to be on that Javier Frias. I do want to make an announcement on that. And it seemed as he knocked on the wrong door. He ended up knocking on one of the students' doors at KJBU. And this, but I'm going to do one completely separate because I'm going to give him opportunity to take back the lie he said because he said that me and him spoke. And me and that man never spoke. He never spoke to me on the phone or in person. So I'm going to do a teaching. I'm going to have a guy on there who he actually talked to. He talked to a a student at King James Bible University. So we will be dealing with that. But other than that, if you guys refresh your screens, you can see the link for um, the Zoom down at the bottom and you're more than welcome to to join. So any questions, you know, you're more than welcome to, to come back there and you can join in and and um, we we be more than happy to address those. I was making sure that, um, my mom had because she liked to do it the other way, so I do this other part. So with that, the same as we said uh, this evening, this evening at three o'clock, we have um, the lost tape will be shown away at King James Bible University with um, with Deacon Emmanuel. It'll be at three o'clock. Um, Pacific time, five o'clock central, and six o'clock eastern. And if you want to make sure, you please make sure you catch that because that's you guys will see it's a very from that that each and every one of you guys um, just stay with it and keep keep moving forward. So until then, I say to each and every person. <laughs>